What's up guys and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Rings video So today is the 19th of August And there has been some new updates regarding the event for the Sora Pierce event And here are the updates as follows So currently you have the chance to obtain some action cards Such as Monster 2, Overlay Levels as well as Indomitable Attack Force as well as Dual Twin Tension Based on the different uh, conditions set right over here And normally what the action cards are used for well, here it is. Alright, so you can view on the action cards that you can obtain by setting it over here. And these action cards normally appear when you are using it against a duel against Sora Pierce. So based on the duel meter down here, which is at 5%, if you manage to get up to the max in a way, you can participate in a duel and duel against Sora Pierce at the level 20 or at level 40 in a special kind of duel where there's a dual chain meter that increases every time so based on the percentage increase or the turn you can act activate the action cards to help you get certain skills off or even some cards into hand that way you can help you can actually finish the game faster not to mention you get some bonus as well if you manage to get the dual chain meter up to 100 or 200 plus percentage depending on on the limit of it and that actually accumulates to the final result as well. Next up is the fact that for the updates regarding this um, Sora PS event itself for the cards, I managed to obtain 3 copies of Sutra Rebirth. It's useful in certain scenarios but not all the time, so you gotta be careful about that. If you want to use something that is much more flexible, I do recommend using Designer Fright Fur since it targets Edge Aim and Fluffle monsters in your graveyard to be brought onto the field and having the option to turn them into Fright Fur monsters so that you can go into Fusion Summoning into Fright Fur Saber 2. And also aside from that, I managed to obtain only one copy of Fright Fur Sheep. So yeah, at least one copy of Fright Fur Sheep is pretty fine for me. It has a, gr yeah, it's a great effect as well. Restricting your opponent from activating spell and traps or even card effects during the battle, f during the during battle phase before the damage step, like the usual ancient gear kind of playstyle. Not to mention, if this card were to be destroyed or sent from the field to the graveyard, special summon this monster to gain 800 attack point boost. So when this card is destroyed, you it gets revived on its own, with returning with 2800 points of attack power. With that being the case, if you already have a fight for a tiger on the field, this monster's attack points can go up significantly and let me tell you it is quite good as well. So as per usual, I do know that there are so there are different type of fight for monsters that require different edge aim monsters to essentially use as the fusion material. For example, the one we are we are quite uh, familiar with is a fight for a tiger and also fight for bear which uses edge aim sabers. Whereas for cards like um, Fight for Daredevil is pretty much more flexible, it, it just requires an edge in monster. And for Fight for Sheep, you require edge in chain. And for Fight for Leo, you require edge in saw. Essentially, you can you can bring those monsters, you can fusion summon using fusion parasite or any other monster cards that can act as a substitute for that fusion material. Or you can also play the playstyle of HM Tomahawk of milling those monsters from your deck to the graveyard in order to gain its name so they can fusion summon during that turn but because of the because of the different scenarios so sometimes if you normal summon something and normal summon something onto the field it might get bounced back into your hand or even vanish as well so one of the few options you can go for is to use the fusion the fusion parasite and the playstyle where you can use different substitute materials so that whenever you get a poly into hand and you have either a fluffle or an edge monster in your hand you can go into any fusion monster that fusion monster of your own choosing based on the materials listed as well. So most of the flexible ones I mentioned is Fight for Daredevil, but cards like Fight for Wolf itself, although it's at 2000 attack points, it can gain the ability to attack based on how many times based on the fusion materials it's used for. And for the case of Fright for Saber 2 on the other hand, if you were to fusion summon this monster, you can fuse special summon that Fright for one of the Fright for monsters that was used for its fusioning material. And not to mention, if you use up to more than 3 fusion materials altogether to bring this monster out, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Keyword cannot be destroyed. But it can still be targeted to be banished or have its attack points reduced or even flip face down. 
So that's one thing you gotta keep an eye out for if you're gonna play this kind of play style. And that's basically the build of my deck. So let's go into the demonstration duel to show you how I play this deck overall. Okay, so now we're going up against the regular uh, regular level 40 sort of peers. And let's see how the duel goes. Okay, so now we have uh, Fluffle really Owl in hand, so this is actually a good card to have. Since it also counts as it's a Fluffle Let's monster, duel. not to mention you are able to search out it's for a Polly turn. as well. So that is one of the few good things of having this card in hand. So first off, let's go into our fight for Daredevil. And bring out and get rid of Fluffle Leo and also H and Sabers. So now we fight for Daredevil at 3000 points of attack on the field. Our opponent has no choice but to mostly set their monster in defense position, so that's one of the few things that's actually quite useful in a way. Okay, what are you going to do? Alright. Good enough. Draw. Normal summon, Fluffle Owl. Then activate Fluffle Owl's effect, get a poly from back to hand. And now we activate Edge and Saber's effect. Alright, revival effect. Let's put Fluffle Bear back on the top of our deck. Then we fusion summon into our Fight for Tiger. Activating Fight for Tiger's effect, we will definitely nuke the board. And now with a clear field and with mo 2 monsters of over 2000 points of attack, this is just an easy win for you just like that as well. Okay, with that being the case, as you saw, this is one of the few easy ways you can go about it. As I mentioned before, using these kind of monsters that can substitute as a fusion, fusion material is essentially good for your Fluffle deck if you are planning to play on a variety of fusion type monsters that, it, that requires different types of edge imp supports all the way. So if you are planning to do that, you, got, you just gotta watch out for and carefully select what kind of H8 monsters you are going to go for. So as you can see, by winning a dual world R3 with a dual assessment of at least 3000, we get one dual to intention. And we just gotta activate Synchro Summon, XC Summon, Rack 7 or Higher Dragon type monster, or a level, or at least a 10,000 or more bell points of damage in a dual world R5 duel, and we can get much more action cards overall. So anyways, that's it for the update regarding up to now on the entire Sora Pierce event as well. So that was, so let's have a quick look again on how I built my deck itself. So playing two Fluffle Leos because this is your main attacker for the deck for your Fluffles. Whereas for the Edge Imp side, you have Edge Imp Tomahawk with 1800 points of attack. Not to mention with the effect of milling an Edge Imp monster from the deck to the graveyard that essentially gains a name as well. So Fluffle Leo on the other hand becomes a 2100 attacker when it attacks. Edge Imp Sabers used as a fusion material, not to mention a special summoning effect of reviving itself onto the board by sending a card from your hand to the top of the deck. Fluffle Bear is just there because of a fusion material. Two Fluffle Owls because this allows us to search for polymerization. Two Fusion Parasites as a fusion substitute. Not to mention one Fright for Fusion, one Seizure Rebirth. 3 Polymerizations, 2 Wall Disruption, and 2 Designer Fright Fur. So that's exactly it for the main deck. For the actual deck, Fright Fur Saber 2, Bear, Tiger, Sheep, Daredevil, Leo, and Wolf. So if you want to play a much wider variety of Fright Fur monsters overall, do I do recommend doing, do, using at least about 2 to 3 Fusion Substitute kind of monsters in your deck. However, if you are planning to play cards like Frightfur Chimera, which requires 3 Frightfur monsters on the other hand, uh, it's good if you play at least one copy inside it, or if you have at least more than 2 copies of Frightfur Fusion overall, because this card requires 3 of your extra deck cards, but if you have 
designer Fright Fur to essentially convert your Edge Imp and also your Fluffle monsters into Fright Fur cards. This allows you to get into a future summoning for Fright Fur Chimera really quick. But at the same time, it all depends on the progress of the duel as well and how the card the duel is gonna go. So normally people whenever they play the fright the fluffle fright fur kind of arch type they will actually play with cards like Toy Vendor. Well for me I don't actually like the engine because you, you aside from getting cards and selling it to the graveyard if it's not a fluffle card, it's actually a waste of resources and if you have maybe if you have more than three copies of Fright Fur Fusion, you can play this card essentially make use of your graveyard to go into a much more Fright Fur Fusion kind of kind of playstyle like uh, how they normally do for Overlord Fusion and Cyber Dragons but overall if you do not have more than 2 or 3 copies of Fright Fur Fusion and you are play planning to play the risk game of Toy Vendor then I suggest you not playing Toy Vendor at all and just going for a simple Fluffle Edge Imp kind of build just like this Anyways that's it for the video thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy and find this video insightful as well as how it how and why I select certain cost of being a deck and maybe there's something new upcoming soon and I'll let you guys know. So until then stay safe and keep dueling goodbye and good night.